Don't be fooled by the title of the video. This is a video game and not something you will find on Pornhub. Just from the intro, you know what's this game all about. Sending Roman soldiers on an expedition out of this world. One soldier at a time. You can clearly hear their happy sounds. The game is known by two names, Kick Buttix in the US and for the rest of the world XXL. Kick Buttix may be a homage to the names in the source material, but I prefer XXL, which I think stands for Big Grand Adventure and in a sense it is. And it's not the type your dirty mind might think of. You travel through whole Europe, you probably noticed it by now. It's a beat em up, not a complex one, but really competently made. Before I continue with the rest of the review, I have to mention something very important. The game needs patching to be able to play it. When I install it and click on the icon, I got this message. I started looking for a solution and the first place I visit was PC Gaming Wiki, but they don't have a page for the game. Luckily, there is a good Samaritan made a patch to fix the issue and made a video about it. The link is in the description below. By the way, the patch don't work on cracked versions, keep that in mind. And don't forget to thank him. Now back to the rest of the video with a history lesson. Asterix or The Adventures of Asterix is a series of French comics. It first appears in 1959 in a French-Belgian comics magazine, Pilote. I apologize to all French people for my pronunciation. It revolves around a small village of Gauls that managed to fight back for years the attempts of Caesar and the whole Roman Empire army to conquer them. The main characters are Asterix and Obelix. The way villagers defend themselves from such a big army is anything but ordinary. They drink magic potion that gives them super strength. The only one not allowed to drink is Obelix. As a kid he fell inside the cauldron with the magic potion, so he is strong all the time. To my surprise, the comics is still going strong and sells. I'm quite happy with that. It's translated into over 100 languages and also have been adapted into various media. 13 movies, 9 animated and 4 live action, there is an upcoming 14 movie this year, 15 board games, 40 video games and a whole theme park. That's impressive. As a kid I grew up mostly knowing only about the animated films. I think I watched them all, but my favorite is the 12 tasks of Asterix. I'm pretty sure the story was inspired by Hercules and the 12 labors, but funnier. The game have very simple plot. One day, Asterix, Obelix and their dog Dogmatix, all names of Ponce and Finnish on X, are hunting in the forest for wild boars, but storm fell upon them. A lightning strikes nearby tree, Dogmatix gets scared and runs away. The duo splits up to search for him. Asterix notices in the distance flames and goes to investigate. The cow's village is burning. In the front of the village, there is a short guy standing there. When Asterix approaches him, his first words are... Greetings! Please don't hit me! He knows what can follow. After that, he asks that he will help him. He used to be Rome's best secret agent until Caesar decides to ask him. He explains that the village was attacked by the Roman Empire army and they captured everyone. Caesar had a marvel map with the location of all the prisoners and to prevent it falling in the wrong hands, he broke it into five pieces and threw it away. But the kidnapped gals managed to get the pieces. So, it's time for our heroes to kick some buttocks. The map 
it's just an excuse to travel all over ancient Europe. You go from one place to another, freeing your friends, get piece of the map and go to the next level. That's the whole story and to be frank, I'm completely fine with that and it's all because of the gameplay. I will now show you what's this game all about. I see at some places the game is labeled as an action adventure, but does this look like an action adventure or more like beat em up? It's more beat em up than anything else. You have punch, jump, grab and target attack. The latter I didn't find it useful. That's it. Simple and responsive controls for simple and fun game. You control mostly Asterix, but at certain places you switch to Obelix. I think they have some difference in the speed and damage, but I can't confirm it. The biggest difference is that Obelix can smash iron crates and pull or push really big stone blocks. While you can't switch at will, there is a designated button for Obelix and Dogmatics to help you. Obelix grabs an enemy and starts spinning him around and throw him. If you stay at one place, he will fly right at you and while in the air, you can one-shot him into space immediately. This happens really fast and it's cool. If not, he falls on the ground and becomes dizzy, giving you a chance to beat him. Dogmatics just fight the soldiers' assets and they drop their weapons. You just punch the ever-living shit out of the enemies. The combat is not very deep, but there is a little bit more to the fighting. When you send someone into space, what's left from him is his helmet. It's kind of suiting. The helmets are the currency. You don't get them only from enemies, but also from breaking crates or from lying around the stage. To get more helmets, you have to collect multipliers. They can be either in some crate or a little bit out of sight. The thing that mostly happens is you collect almost all the helmets and then you find the multipliers. It can get a little bit annoying, but when you figure out that they are in not so obvious places, it gets a little bit easier. In the levels you can find this creepy merchant that comes out of a box. How he fits inside with all his stuff is a mystery. You can buy meat to restore your health represented as a wooden shield, buy more shields and the last is combos. You can't do them all the time. Here is how it works. It's very simple actually. When you fight a meter, I call it energy meter, on the left is filling. When it reaches the top, it plays a sound and show the word combo to tell you it's time to kick some buttons. Every combo needs certain amount of energy. There is a 3 button combo which I found to use the most because it makes the enemies dizzy. You grab a soldier and slam him in the ground. The shockwave stuns the enemies and this gives you time to send them in the out of this world expedition. The other is grabbing someone for the leg and start smashing them around and again you stun soldiers. The next is called mole combo. You go underground like a mole and start punching everyone from beneath them. There are two more, but I didn't manage to buy the most expensive one because it will involve insane amount of grinding, but the last one I bought I'm saving it for later. It's amazing. If you don't use combos, and I don't know why you wouldn't, the meter goes down if you're not punching someone. But there is one more use from the energy meter. Your punches are slow, but with gaining more and more energy, they become faster. This makes you play aggressively and I really like that. If you are too careful with your punches, they will stay slow and you can't do combos. Simple. To be fair, sometimes I played it safe, but it depends what type of enemy I'm facing. Some can just gang on you and kill you in seconds. Don't you think that the game is too hard? It's a little bit on the easy side, but if you become way too careless, you'll die. I had my fair share of deaths. The game is published in 2003 and graphically I'm amazed how well it holds up. This is thanks to Dev doing outstanding job with the level design. Not so much as high res textures, but the architecture of the world. It feels like you're in the comic book world of Asterix. All the levels are vibrant and colorful, from the forest around the Gaulish village to the snowy level of Helvetia, Switzerland, sandy Egypt, there is interesting sights to see. Favorite level is Egypt, very bright, very different than the others. There are a couple of small problems. The first is the camera. The game is designed to hide things from you and the camera is often at weird angles, high above the characters, not lower as usual and it's a little bit annoying. The second is the way enemies spawn. It's always behind you or more specifically where the camera is not looking at. Because of that you either have to constantly rotate the camera and not properly react every time on what's happening or just blindly punch with the camera facing the character. The second option works if you are facing regular soldiers. It can be that annoying. It may sound bad but it's actually not. I never died because of that. The third is the bosses. They are absolutely the same. A giant machine with 4 spiky rollers. You have to get Asterix on top of the machine to jump on a giant red button so Obelix can run down and unscrew the spiky rollers. 
Arenas surrounding the bosses are different, but almost all of them play the same way. This is the weakest part of the gameplay. On a technical side, I already mentioned that the game needs patching, but there is also the resolution. It can't go more than 1280x960. I played it in 4x3 aspect ratio, forcing it through my monitor. Now, if some of this bothers you, skip the game. If not, buy a copy. The game is cheap now on eBay. The gameplay I am showing throughout the video probably seems to you that there is no diversity and it's repetitive. And you are right to some extent. Hear me out. The game is between 7 to 9 hours long. Throughout that time, I almost never felt bored. By the end it got a little bit tiresome, but then something cool happened and I was excited again. The reason why I didn't got bored as much as I should is the combination of couple of things. Sound effects, animation of the characters and music. I'll let you see a footage without me speaking. Listen and watch. Did you notice characters animation while punching or how enemies are stretching when you hit them and the noises they make before and after beating them? How about the heart pumping music? The way the game is structured as a whole emphasizes constantly moving and pushing forward. You want to punch faster? Keep the energy meter high. You want to do devastating combos? Keep punching. You are inside a cartoon. With every level the game ups the stakes in the form of how many enemies you will face and not only that, it puts you in different situations with different type of enemies. And speaking of enemies, for the length of the game they are fairly diverse, mostly different type of Roman soldiers with swords, spears, shields and so on. Some of them are blocking your punches and you need to be persistent to break the block, others are flying and dropping bombs or they just do regular swings. When you start seeing them mix and match, it becomes even more fun. In the beginning you will face 20 to 40 Roman soldiers at a time before you continue your journey, but with every level you slowly are put against rising number and different type of enemies. As I said, you start from 20 to 40, then 50, 70, 90, 120, 200, 300, 500, 1000 to a 3000. It's nuts. This is what I like about the game. It can go from 0 to 100 kilometers in a second. Maybe you're thinking punching and making combos can get boring with 3000 soldiers and you'd be probably right. But by the time you reach those numbers, you'd probably have in your arsenal. The Twister Combo This is the combo I was talking about, it's magnificent, without it, it will definitely become tiresome, just look at that number go down, entire arena in a couple of seconds. Before reaching the 3 figure number, you are often given the aforementioned magic potion, sometimes you have one or two, but other, unlimited access to it. When Asterius drinks it, he goes fast and furious, one punch regular soldiers and two three hits tougher ones, you go over the enemies like a steamroller, it's glorious. Fighting isn't the only thing you do, it's the majority of the game, but the devs spiced up a little bit of game with light puzzles and couple of infinite runner style sections, if I can call them that. You either slide down on a hill on top of Obelix's belly and try to collect helmets and avoid obstacles, or Asterix and Dogmatics are in a boat and Obelix is the engine. They are short and first diversions and if you want you can replay them to get all the helmets. If I'm not counting the helmets, and I don't, the only collectible is the Golden Laurels. When you finish a level and collect all of them, you will get a reward. I managed to do it on only one level because I'm not a completionist and the reward was alternate costume for Obelix. It's a swimsuit I think. You see it throughout the video constantly. I don't know if there is anything else than the costumes. Laurels are part of the puzzles in the game. Sometimes they are a little bit easier to find, but often they are surrounded by multipliers and helmets, so even if you don't care about them, there is a reward for snooping around. You can find a small island full of helmets. It feels awesome when you discover it. You found a treasure island. 
with helmets you can buy in the gallery pictures. On them you not only see the characters from the game, but also the developer team. I feel that the whole team had a lot of fun making the game, if I can judge by those pictures. If you don't want to spend helmets, they are in the game folders. I found them by accident. No I'm repeating myself, but you play a cartoon. All the over-exaggerated movements of the characters, music, sound effects, it's just simply awesome. And the fast combat. I was saving this for the end of the video, but the way you restore health is the coolest I've seen in a video game. You punch wild pores and they drop cooked, I guess, drumsticks. Not only this is extremely fitting, but it's also cool. Can you imagine this in the real world? Please don't punch wild boars or any animals. If you watch the movies or read the comics, this is a game for you. If you are not familiar with the source material, I still recommend it. You beat a lot of Roman soldiers just like in the movies and comics, maybe even more. Controls are perfect and you know what's funny? You can rebuy the controller keys. A game from 2003 allow you to do that and a lot of modern games don't. Up until a couple of months, it was hard to find a copy on eBay, but now they are around 2-3 pounds. It's definitely worth the money. Now I need to get my hands on XXL2. What really warms my heart is the announcement of the sequel's remaster and the next chapter, XXL3. Supposedly they will come out in 2019. So happy. Hope they can do justice to the first two games and expand the gameplay.